oh hey, this looks uh, familiar, and that's because it is. This is the new, updated, fixed Samsung Galaxy Fold. Hey, what is up guys, I'm KBHD here. So, a little refresher for those who may not have heard or may have forgotten the original story. So, as it goes, Samsung announced a crazy folding phone in February, Galaxy Fold. Later in the year, it starts the press cycle, so I got my hands on one, I did my first impressions video, and then I got the phone in the studio, did an unboxing, the whole deal. I'll drop all the links below in case you wanna go watch those. So there were a small handful of review units in the wild, and then one by one, including mine, they started breaking for various reasons. So Samsung recalled all those review units, they took mine back, everyone else gave theirs back, then they took them behind closed doors and started working on figuring out what went wrong and trying to fix it. And then of course, during all this, there's all the, the doubters and the haters, of course, like, oh, there's no way they're gonna actually try to relaunch this phone. It's doomed. It's just nothing should happen like this. It's canceled. Maybe, maybe it's canceled. But all that brings us to right now. And as you can see, it isn't canceled. It's back. They've fixed it. And they're actually starting to ship this thing. So even though I already reviewed the original Galaxy Fold and all its quirks and all the things I liked and disliked about it, we're gonna take another look at it, what's different with this fixed one. And I wanna show you the updates and some extra thoughts and opinions I've had. So just looking at the new Fold, you know, you can tell, of course, it's very similar. In fact, even if you paid super close attention to the original, you might not be able to tell exactly what is fixed about this new version. So here you go. Number one, that thin layer that appeared to be a screen protector but is actually part of the display that may have been peeled off by some people, <laughs> that's now extended all the way to the edges and it's tucked underneath the display bezel right up to the corners and the sides. So not only don't you mistake it as a screen protector and try to peel it, but you physically can't, so that's good. Then two, they've added these T-shaped caps at the top and bottom of the display right at the hinge to prevent any dust or debris from basically getting into the hinge itself. So if you look at footage of the old Galaxy Fold, it doesn't have these. And honestly, it's, a, I guess, a little surprising in hindsight that it didn't have this or that they didn't think of this. I mean, it was kind of wild that the Fold had big gaps here basically before, and it looked crazy that you could just have stuff get into the phone. So it's good to see that these are sealed off now. Uh, now, it's not like liquid or water resistant or anything with these caps, but it's just a little bit more protected than it was before. And then there's other very subtle things like the gap the hinge makes when the phone is closed is a little bit smaller. So you can see a crack still through the middle, but just barely. I don't think this has as much of an effect on durability as people might say, but this is true about it. And the hinge mechanism itself is a little more firm. Uh, and I realize this comparison means pretty much nothing to anyone because almost nobody has felt the hinge of the original Galaxy Fold, but I am noticing it has a, a more firm snap to placing it flat and then unsnapping it from flat. Other than that, it's still the same. You know, the same wild phone that is a, a thin screened mini phone when it's closed and a seven inch square mini tablet when it's open. The same folding phone with a wireless charging, reverse wireless charging. It's the same phone with six cameras, three on the back, all really high end, two on the inside and one on the front cover. Uh, and all that means it's still fun and it's still a unique experience for gaming, for web browsing. It's awesome for email, I think. And of course, just multitasking in general on this absolutely huge display that you can fold and put in your pocket. Uh, the crease looks about the same to me too. Uh, and I was just curious if while they were behind closed doors, if they would change any other little things, like maybe improve the display material a bit. Uh, but it doesn't seem like anything aside from those few things are different. It's still going to be a soft plastic because it still has to fold in half in ways that hard glass can't. Uh, so much so that there's a new warning on the screen during the setup process that includes a warning to avoid pressing the screen hard. Um, because it's still true that if you dig your fingernails into the plastic or accidentally scratch this protective layer at the top or even just press it way too hard, you can actually damage the Galaxy Fold. But look, at the end of the day, I think it's a good thing that Samsung saw what was going wrong, accepted it, took all of them back, they never actually shipped any to customers, and fixed it internally. And you know, they actually addressed what was going wrong. I only say this because I could easily see a world where some other companies maybe take the more stubborn, like Apple-like approach where like, look, 
you're holding it wrong, you guys are using it wrong, it was breaking because of user error, it'll be fine, just ship it anyway. And that's something uh, I'm glad Samsung didn't do. Like, let's just be totally real. They copy Apple in a lot of things. I'm glad they didn't copy that. It's just so wild that this all came down to a few little faults of the highly engineered hinge that had to happen to make this folding phone possible. But then they had to go ahead and re-engineer it again because the damn users kept breaking it. But hey, that's what it comes down to. If you keep a product completely and totally secret like this and you never take it really out of a lab to test it with real people, then the first real people that use it are gonna do things that you may have never thought of doing in the lab, like, you know, folding it with things other than robot hands and putting it in lint-filled pockets and going to beaches with sand everywhere and just all kinds of crazy stuff like that. This new fixed Galaxy Fold is not a radically different phone. As you can tell, it's very similar. It's still a delicate phone that, honestly, I think probably people are going to still break this when they get it or a month after they get it, or a year after they get this phone. But what it represents, I think, is Samsung taking a stance, really, that they believe in this, this whole foldable phone form factor thing in the first place. My feelings on this phone are pretty much the same, which is that I'm just really happy it exists. Even if I wouldn't use it as my daily phone necessarily, I really did enjoy using it. It has a lot of great things about it, but wouldn't use it, I don't think, on the daily but I'm glad it exists and I'm glad that companies actually take big risks like this still. In a world of, you know, maybe more iterative phones, like you just saw the new iPhone. It's very similar to the last one. Uh, big risks like this, and it's clear that this was a risk, we saw what happened, uh, are still awesome to see. So I hope we someday get a uh, Samsung Galaxy Fold 2, maybe next year. I have no idea what that would look like or what would be different about it. It's pretty wild just seeing this first one, but I hope we get a sequel. Either way, that's it for this quick update. Also, do you want one of these? Because I do have an extra one. Thanks to dbrand, I'm gonna do a giveaway of a Samsung Galaxy Fold on Twitter sometime in the next 48 hours or so. So go follow over there if you haven't already to get in on that. And hey, maybe you'll get lucky. Either way, again, that's been it. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.